the nation still reeling from this week's leak of a draft opinion by Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito that indicates the court will soon overturn Roe v. Wade. President Biden, who has sworn to uphold and execute federal laws, has had little to say about what appears to be the crime at the center of the story. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue the conversation uh, with uh, Nina Hayworth is uh, joining us to talk about this. Nina, um, we... we you know, a lot of people expected this to be the case. So the, the, the feigned outrage uh, from the left that they can't believe this is the ruling. We kind of expected this was the ruling. What we didn't expect is that it would be leaked, which I'm not aware of ever happening before from the Supreme Court, and that apparently the president not taking it very seriously or anybody on the left for that matter. Right. No, but this is an extension of the left, just the perhaps even in some ways the most egregious uh, example of the left's attitude by any means necessary. Uh, you know, the, the, the law process, the Constitution itself, uh, they don't apply to the left. They, they have an agenda. Uh, they, they govern by force, by fear, by mob rule, uh, by inciting emotion. So it, 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 I agree completely that the first uh, job of the president as the chief executive uh, and the first job of the court right now is to preserve the integrity of the Supreme Court, uh, of, of all the branches of government. They're expected to be the ones closest to the adults uh, in mm -hmm. the process. So the first concern of the chief justice and of the president of the United States as the executive charged with uh, uh, following the Constitution and, and protecting and preserving it should be to find out who leaked this draft document. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, meantime, Nan, one activist group, now I can't believe this is actually happening now in our country. The group is known as Ruth Sent Us, reportedly oh. calling for protests at the homes, protests at the homes of these conservative justices, of course, on the Supreme Court in the coming days amid, of course, the draft leak we're all talking about. Now, the group has actually published on its website the alleged address of addresses, yes. those home addresses of those justices. Uh, I can't believe this is actually happening. How much danger could they potentially be in? A lot of danger. They're trying to put targets on backs. Uh, and it's especially ironic, Ruth sent us, because even Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who is an avatar uh, for so many women of the left especially, uh, expressed her own uh, misgivings about the constitutionality of the Roe decision. Uh, and about the consequences that float from that. So yeah, they're they're putting targets on backs. They know what they're doing. And you know, if, if they they'd love even to put a serious scare uh, that might induce, uh, say, a heart attack or something in uh, an elderly justice who disagrees with them. Hmm. I would put nothing past these people. Nothing. It, it, the, <laughs> the law, morality. Uh, you know what what we enshrined in the Constitution as it which is the most humane and liberating design for government ever created by mankind yeah. uh, ever, all of that has been uh, has been thrown aside by the left they are about pure force to get what they want yeah uh, <laughs> just to make clear Nan this uh, this right that they're talking about being taken away. It's actually up to the states now. Mm -hmm. So the states Correct. can decide how they want to rule, which is closer to the people. That's the concept. Is yes. The people would elect their representatives to decide what that is. I guess what yes. strikes me as far as the process of the Supreme Court is leaking really violates that process. And, and to yes. me, the, the privacy of that process is so important. And for anybody that criticizes what happened on January 6th as an interruption to the process of picking our president, which I think there's some valid arguments for. Um, mm -hmm. You have to make the same argument that this process in the Supreme Court, if they can't have um, security and have a sanctity mm -hmm. in that process, then it just becomes political. And the reason they're appointed for life, as a reminder, is so it's not political. Precisely. And we do that with judiciary appointments. 
uh, because uh, really the federal government is like rock, paper, scissors. You know, the executive branch has its powers that to check the other two. And so the Supreme Court uh, as well, the, the justices are selected by the executive branch. They have to be approved by the Senate. They are not always. Uh, but once they are there, yes, it's a lifetime appointment meant to confer the greatest gravity uh, and the greatest integrity uh, you know, that obligation on those justices. And we know that the justices do have their, uh, obviously, their, their points of view, their predilections, their, their view of the Constitution. But they need to be respected. The process needs to be respected. And you are exactly right. What this decision would do, should it turn out to be the decision, would be to return uh, that uh, that decision to the states. That's where the Constitution says it should be right now. The Constitution can be amendment, can be mm -hmm. amended. They can go for an amendment, but you can't rewrite the Constitution based on uh, the emotions of the moment. Sure. And of course, you know, going back to the leak, we're seeing all the protests. We're seeing uh, the left calling for packing the courts, but they all seem to be kind of ignoring, you know, what Bob mentioned. We're talking about the sanctity of the court, which all takes us back yes. to the leak. Now, Jen Psaki was asked about this and if that leaker should be punished. Let's take a look at what she said. That's up for the Department of Justice and others to determine. Uh, what our focus is on is not getting our uh, distracted or our eye off the ball of what is most important to people across the country here, which is not the leak and the story of the leak. It is the fact that women's health care is at risk for millions of people across this country. You know, what strikes me, Nan, about this is if the shoe were on the other foot, if it were a case that, that liberals had been arguing for years and they were, and it was leaked, um, as a disruption to the process and an effort to throw a wrench in the works and possibly change the outcome, which I don't believe for a second it would, sure. uh, it, it will in this case at least, um, I, you know, it seems like they should care about the process, even if they're unhappy with the outcome of the ruling. Yes, uh, I agree with you. Bob, but over and over again, the left has shown, and I think it's very important to recognize a certain distinction there. The left believes in using government. You know, they, they really are the, you know, and, and the Democratic Party tends to be the party of government. They want to use government with its, ultimately government is defined by its ability to compel us, to force us to do things, that policing power. So when you believe in forcing everyone else, every other citizen to bend to your will, uh, then you use any means. You're, you're not afraid to use force. You know, that's the whole uh, modus operandi of the left. It's, it's different among conservatives. True conservatives right. believe that there is process and that yeah. the Constitution gives us a framework in which all citizens can have a voice. That's we have right. to understand where we have that voice. In the case of this decision right. uh, on abortion, that voice belongs, according to the Constitution, as it exists today, with the states. The Constitution can be amended, but that that is a process. The left doesn't want process. They want tantrums. They want force. Yeah. They want yielding to emotion. And this will be on the exam for anybody watching. Uh, <laughs> Nan Hayworth, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Nan.